I'm Brady Forrest, back again. And joining me this time is Lucas. Hi, everybody. And we, along with two others, are going to be hosting Startup Ignite. So I'd now like to welcome out Mike Butcher from TechCrunch UK and Ireland. And Christoph Mayer, recently of Nokia. Now, the format is simple. We have six startups that each get five minutes. They're doing slides. And then at the end, the judges will each get basically a tweet that they say. So one or two sentences. And then we move on to the next startup. So real lightning round idea, uh, trying to fit into the Twitter ethos. And if you want to participate, send a tweet to, well, Twitter, uh, but then mark it with pound ignite B, so hash ignite B. And now we'd like to welcome, if you guys want to have a seat on our judge's couch. Thank you very much. And now we'd like to welcome out our first startup. OK, so the first startup is Plista. And Dominic from Plista will tell us briefly what, uh, what he's up to. Dominic, welcome. It's actually not my presentation on the screen, so uh, I got Amazi in front of me. Uh, Your time is running. I have no clue where the presentation is. Yeah. Come here. Just take this. All right. Uh, OK, pass that. <laughs> but you need to stay. So yeah, good morning everybody, good evening. Um, we work a lot, so it's just the morning for everybody of us and our team every time. Welcome to the presentation of blister.com. I bet that you all are familiar with the problem that getting information off the internet today is like taking a drink from a fire hydrant. There's just too much information, too much content, too many products to buy, but too less relevancy. So that's the bad news for today, but obviously we got some good news, and that's our offer to you. So Blister is a user-centric personalization and recommendation network. What it basically does, it's based, its engine is based on collaborative filtering and enhanced through social graph applications. What it gives you as an end user are user individual recommendations on Blister enabled sites or similar news or articles and you can even personalize whole web pages by reordering the content with just one click. Another good news is that Plista basically works on all kinds of items, ranging from news to retail sites, and is available on different channels. So you can use Plista on online, mobile, or even in the future on video on demand devices as well. Last but not least, it's important to note that Plista works cross domains, so it gives you the chance to experience content from the long tail. And what OpenID is for the registration process. Plista's open preference model allows you with one central preference profile. So you always take your preferences with you, no matter where you go. So who is it actually primarily for? Who is the user? Well, it's us, actually. Nobody else who is experiencing an over-informed, over overloaded internet of today. So you might ask why we do it, right? Well, as I told you in the beginning of my presentation, we got an information overload. The internet becomes a labyrinth where you don't find the information, and there's tons of information which you might probably like to find, and you feel lost. Why? Because we all got different preferences. You know, from time to time, we always like the same. But there are different moments where we hopefully like totally different, right? So having said that, you got one chance. There's always somebody like you out there, always somebody with the same preference set like you. So how does this magic work? Well, let me show in just four simple steps. First, you download the Plista plugin. So we don't need any cooperation with any publisher. Obviously, we strive for it, but we don't need it. You download Plista and you plug it. Then we observe, you track you down, your rankings that you give to us anonymously. Then we calculate similarities to find your doppelgangers in the system, to being able to filter what you want and give you recommendations of content that interests you on sites that you already visit. So why we do it? Well, we just want to tailor your personalized experience on the internet. And obviously, 
save you time and money. So, um, furthermore, you can always find your doppelganger with Blizzard. There's always somebody like you out there. <laughs> you can take your recommendations with you no matter where you go. You get to know what your friends like, no matter if they like it or not. They just have to open up their preference privacy profiles for you. And you can share the content you find or the products you buy with people who really like it as well. Because we know that they like it. We have already calculated that for you. So who is it secondarily for? I mean, how are we going to make money out of this, right? Well, each recommendation has a specific value. And we take a percentage of this value. And this value is set by an exchange. So it's a risk-free balanced, balanced marketplace for content owners, retailers, and advertisers to buy and sell recommendations. It's basically nothing else than a very user-centric recommendation and ad network where you as a publisher and acting as a seller can promote your items virally and drive traffic, can target users individually and increase your CTRs, CPM, CPCs or whatever your strategic alignment would be. Um, instead, acting as a buyer, um, being a publisher and acting as a buyer, you can increase your PIs, get more clicks and visits, you get happier customers and be helped to monetize your offering. So, well, that's basically it. Trust us. Visit plista.com and register for our private beta. It's free and it's safe. Thank you. I, my thought is Firefox extensions let you route around other, uh, let you route around walls. We got an Internet Explorer extension as well, so don't worry. Mike. The friendly stalker with recommendations. <laughs> well, it's all done anonymously and all done with viewer acceptance. So it's collaborative filtering. Those guys who are familiar with the technology, we don't store private information. You don't need to register for the system. We don't actually need your interest. It's not a semantic approach. It could be laid upon Plissa, but what we do is we just collect items which you like and compare you to other people that like it as well, just as Amazon.com does. I said friendly. Lucas? Okay. So, so my tweet would be um, like in international and inno innovation from Germany plus great salesmanship. That's Plister and Dominic. Thanks. So, Thank you. Christoph? Yeah, my tweet is, I love it. Collaborative filtering is a future of consumption. All right. Thank you very much, Dominic. <laughs> now I'd like to welcome out our next uh, entrepreneur, Donya Gerhardt. She's coming here from Emezi, which has offices in Zurich and San Francisco. Donya? Welcome, everybody. My name is Donya Gerhardt. I'm the COO and CFO of Emezi, a Switzerland based web startup. We just launched a platform for social collaboration in September that empowers you to influence the world by taking action and running public projects. So today, web-based social networking is really big. I might like you, I might want to connect with you on a social network, and maybe we'll become friends. So most community platforms address that human need for belonging, for friendship and identification. But the internet generation is growing up, it's moving forward, and it's striving for a more meaningful web activity. And that's why Amazi addresses the human need for esteem, that is, influence, achievement, and recognition. So Amazi supports groups and individuals with a more evolved social network where these people can launch global initiatives and really collaborate on these. So Macy is actually universal for any kind of project of any size and topic. But in the first phase, we're concentrating on social action projects. Just to give you a small example, Graham is one of our users from South Africa who launched the project Dixie Kids. He wants to bring all the kids from his South African village to the movie theater which is three hours car drive away. So he promoted his idea on Amazie in a nice project magazine. He looked for people to help him, so found supporters, and he raised the required money to get this done. 
Now this Saturday, this movie evening is happening and I'm really sure that there are going to be a lot of happy children. So what are the steps we think are required for successful projects? First of all, getting the idea out. That's why we created this project magazine where you can in an easy way, an attractive way, describe your idea to the world and which is easy accessible from anywhere on the web so people know what your project is about. The second thing is that you need a network behind it, a community. So there's a whole social network behind each project and furthermore, there are collaboration tools. So you can really discuss, you have a rights board, you have file sharing options, you have more than just the networking aspect. And third and very important, you have fundraising opportunities. So every project initiator can start raising funds on Amazie very easily and also ask for further support, such as voluntary work and maybe services or goods. So these are the things we need, uh, we think that are required for successful projects. Now what's new we're announcing today? Let me not waste any more words, but let Professor Project P tell you about our new program. Hi, Mr. O'Reilly, dear judges, dear Web Expo participants, dear freaks and geeks. My name is Professor Project Pete, and it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you my two new favorite Amazie babies. And please excuse the poor quality of the picture because we had to cut the costs of our startup company transmission satellite. And the first of these uh, babies is the Amazie Virtual Camp, which you can find by going to amazie.com slash camp. Now, Amazie Camp was created by Amazie for organizations. So you can learn to use this virtual space, which you are accessing through your screen right now, for your organization to promote its cause and win the world for it. Now, how is that done? Well, here at Amazie Camp, we have three main benefits. The first is that the first 150 organizations to join the camp get free pro membership on Amazie for six months. The second benefit, and this one's crazy, is our wonderful online help desk, which you can access through Yahoo, MSN, ICQ, or Skype. And on the other end of which, listen close, is not some back office person, but our CEO helping you with anything that you need. Wow. And the third benefit is yours truly, Professor Project Pete, giving you a weekly update on what's going on at Amazie Camp. So, organizations, what's the call of the day? Go to amazie.com slash camp and join. The second baby is the Amazie Bucket, which you can find by going to amazie.com slash bucket. The Amazie Bucket provides you with the funding that you need for your projects. Amazie will sponsor a total of 10,000 US dollars to the three projects with the most members. Drawing date is on the 22nd of January, 2009. So, let's stop talking about economic downturn. This is economy. This is the Amazie bucket. Let me repeat. You can find it by going to amazie.com slash bucket. Yes, Scott? The world? Two seconds till uh, Armageddon. Okay, wait. Okay, I'm ready. Come on, let it rip. Lucas, what are you thinking? <clears throat> My tweet would be like vertical, vertical collaborative tool and community application and social entrepreneurship always worth the bonus. Christoph. I think grassroots social entrepreneurship is the future. Let, let them strive. And for this, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I would say my tweet would be something like uh, Facebook groups are fucked up, don't work, and never freed any monks in t Tibet. <laughs> well, I find money is always a great way to get users. Thank you very much for coming out. Thank you very much.
And now I'd like to welcome out Ulrich from Texter. Good evening. My name is Andreas Steinhauser. Some of you might know me as one of the founders of Gate 5, but uh, today I want to present uh, one of my new project, which we called Texter.com. That doesn't work. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit problem with the radio control. Um, it is a fact that we all read more, but the most uh, text we read today is digital. So um, we read email attachment documents, we read internet, blogs, uh, stuff like that. And uh, that all enables a complete new market for devices, reading devices. I think I don't have to explain why that market is really huge. Um, but what is completely 100% missing is a complete solution for combining your texts with uh, easy organization methods, with uh, enrich it with, uh, with the power of a community and bring that to uh, whatever device, wherever you want. So I am very proud today to announce Texter.com as a public beta. Um, this is a platform where, which is 100% JavaScript with uh, multiple drag and drop features. You can select files and drag it and organize it. It is uh, uh, complete, um, easy to use, intuitive interface. We combine that with an upload tool, you all know the problem uh, not to have the actual, the final version of your presentation. So uh, with that upload tool, you install this on your desktop device and keep all your documents in sync with texter.com and not only with texter.com, but with uh, your community, with your friends, with the work group, you're working on documents together. Um, we combine that also with the best and breed clipping tool. You can clip, which means grab texts or documents from the internet. You can uh, pull out uh, PDF documents, EPUB documents, and push them directly into your Texter account. And um, let's call that a kind of uh, solid state delicious. So forget all that mess with uh, broken URLs and stuff like that. Just organize and manage it in your text account and share it with your friends, share it with uh, a, a group of people you're working together with and so on. We're not at least uh, providing you with an API and uh, widgets to enhance your own website, your blog, whatever, with uh, all the functions we provide at texter.com. And more important than that, we really focus on mobile devices of any kind where you can read on. So you always have all the information on hand in your pocket, what you need, wherever you are, whenever you need that. First of that will be the iPhone client. Uh, what a surprise. We will uh, release that on 1st on December. You will find it on the App Store online. With the iPhone client, you can access uh, your Texter account, all the texts you stored there, all the texts which are always in sync, remember that. And uh, you can look at all the texts and documents your community, your friends, and so on, are willing to share with you. And to monetize that, we, include, we will include a complete full-blown shop system to enable a marketplace for self-publishing and for, for um, uh, selling books, information, text documents, and so on. So, back to the whole picture. Conclusion is, Texter.com 
is the first and best complete solution for managing all your documents, all your texts, combine them, organize them, structure them, and share it with your friends, a group of people you work with, and not at least, put it into your pocket. You always have the actual versions in your pocket, on your device. And we are open for business now, and I would like to invite you to try texter.com. Thank you. It's like my personal S3. Lucas? Hey guys. <clears throat> so um, Texta, hard to get, which problem they exactly solve, but smells visionary and like a big domain. Improving a read my reading experience is something I would be willing to pay for. Dear Texter, you had me at hello. <laughs> it was iTunes for text, but somehow the romance is dead. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Oliver. Thank you. Thank you. And the next startup, the next presenter is Gabriel from Aka Aki. Welcome. My name is Gabriel Joran. I am founder and managing director of Akaaki. And I'm here to tell you some exciting new stuff about our mobile social software. But actually, I want to start with the most horrific scenario we could come up with, and that's a day without Akaaki. <laughs> sound, please. Some sound would be great. because it's a film, you know? <laughs> Get me the music, please, guys. I, I have to sing otherwise, I, I will. <laughs> I'll just try again, I'm waiting for a wonder. The plug is great. No sound. Sing. Sing. <laughs> I can tell you a bit. Uh, I think I get extra time for this. I will. Do I? You get extra time. I get extra time. Yeah. Akaaki. Akaaki is a tool for your mobile phone um, telling you all the things you want to know about the people that cross your path um, and that you don't know yet. So it's. Um, it's more like a, a mobile social network, but it's even more like that because we're not uh, talking a, a tool that just shows where your friends are. There are quite a lot of them, but it's about getting in touch with new people like uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> It works, as you can see. And now, uh, my second try for the worst thing that could happen a day without Akaaki. And it doesn't work again. <laughs> so. <laughs> it is. It is super up. Huh? Um, yeah. I'll try it again. What would a day be like without Aka Aki? Anna would miss seeing her friend Marie walking by the cafe just where Anna happens to be sitting. Marie would never learn that Julian is interested in Canadian films, just like her. Julian wouldn't have a clue that his old school friend Jan happens to be in the city. Jan would take much too long to figure out how to speak to Sarah and never see her again. And Sarah would never know that her friend Anna is sitting in their favorite cafe. 
With Akaaki, you always know what your friends are doing. Akaaki tells you who happens to be crossing your path or is nearby, and lets you get in contact afterwards if you've missed the chance. With Akaaki, you show others who you are and what you like. Akaaki connects you to other people, those near you, in your area, in your city. Akaaki doesn't cost a thing and works with almost any mobile phone. Yes, um, this uh, was an iPhone at the end of the film. Um, so today we are announcing the Akaaki iPhone app. This fall, you'll be able to discover Akaaki members and stay in contact with your friends using your iPhone or iPod Touch. Until now, Akaaki detects other members nearby using Bluetooth, which has a reach of about 20 meters. It took us quite some time to figure out how to bring Akaaki to the iPhone because you can't access Bluetooth there programmatically. So we had to go beyond Bluetooth, not just on the iPhone, but on our Java apps too. However, we didn't want to switch to GPS alone because it doesn't work indoors, and many Akaaki encounters happen in metros and clubs where there's no GPS reception at all. Besides, it's really battery consuming, and most users don't just have GPS on their phones yet. So we didn't want to have the iPhone users living on an island. Um, they should be part of the ever-growing Akaaki community. So we found a way to marry these two platforms, iPhone and Java, without GPS. Akaaki will widen its reach from 20 meters to 50 kilometers using cell positioning. We're using the location of the cell tower your phone is in, not just on the iPhone, but on a lot of standard phones too. This is a very energy efficient technology because we're only using information that is already there. Its precision is perfect for finding um, people who are nearby, and it's available on most cell phones currently in use. So we're going beyond the 20 meter range, starting tomorrow with the German version of the new Akaaki. The international version will follow this fall. So the combination of Bluetooth, cell positioning, and the iPhone's location feature is a world exclusive in Akaaki. And our privacy controls are simple, yet very powerful. You decide if you want to share your location with everyone, your friends, or no one. You don't need GPS. What you do need, however, is the desire to discover, to discover new people. And this is what Akaaki is all about. It's a playful approach to finding new friends. And we have some great matchmaking tools in place, so you'll find just the right people. When two members meet, their phones immediately show their mutual friends and interests, and our users just love it. And the media loves it. Um, Michael Arrington uh, of TechCrunch even says that what we're doing is the holy grail of mobile social networking. Okay, that might be a bit over the top, but I won't object, Michael, of course. Austrian philosopher Martin Buber once said, all actual life is encounter. So leave your computer at home, leave it where it is, go out and about, and encounter people at any time and any place with your cell phone and Akaaki. Thank you. Christoph, this seems like your area of expertise. Yes. Uh, I think Akaki gets social interaction right and social interaction first. When will I start using it? I didn't get it, sorry, acoustically. When will I start using it? When will you start using it? I think you have a, a Java phone, a Symbian phone. Just start. I think you have a data plan. Nokia should give you one of these. <laughs> Lucas? Um, okay. um, Akaaki made me a god, omnipotent. Unfortunately, it made everyone else a god as well, but now I have more friends. <laughs> <laughs> and you even might get these people, you get to know your friends even better 
and you know when they sneak around the corner, <laughs> which might be helpful. <laughs> so. <clears throat> well, yeah. Very helpful, very helpful. So, my tweet is useful but hard to start with chicken and egg problem. And uh, yeah, it will be exciting to know who of my friends is within a 50 kilometer range of Berlin. Actually, there is quite a nice reason to know that. Um, it depends on the, the, the quality of your relationship. If it is someone you know very good from earlier days and a person that is not in town right now, if you've been friends at school, for example, and this person just leaves his plane on, uh, um, a temp, um, on um, Schönefeld, um, which is likely to be 30 kilometers from here, this might be a helpful information, and there's no need for them to like, check in and out and send SMS, I'm here, I'm there. Um, you will just know. One. I've got the new one. <laughs> Aki made me a god, along with everyone else, unfortunately. Um, uh, but now I have many more friends, and I met my school, school friend from many years ago, and now I've divorced my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, th there are some, some really cool use cases that have to do with divorcing uh, in Akaaki. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, but, so what you're saying is that it's great to be green while getting caught. Sorry? It's great to be green while getting caught. Yeah. <laughs> you can say that, yes. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome out Dale and Jason from iDesktop TV. Hi, I'm iDesktop TV. And I'm YouTube. iDesktop was released last November. We have over 50,000 uh, registered users and over half a million views a, a month. Half a million? Well, YouTube has over 1 billion views per day. But that also means that the daily bandwidth costs are around $1 million. Now, today we're releasing iDesktop version 2. It's an easy to use, um, easy visually web application for. Um, searching, watching, and um, organizing YouTube videos. Okay, but we already offer this. Sure you do. We're using your APIs to create something truly Web 2.0. Now, here's what we've been doing. So you can easily see the video thumbnails, and you can zoom in and out to see more or less for your preference. <coughs> so if you type in a search result, you'll automatically... Um, so if you type, uh, type in Web 2.0, it'll bring up the search results for Web 2.0. And then if you click on the thumbnails, it'll bring up a player. Now in this player, you can click on show info to view the comments, um, related videos, and you can adjust that to suit your preference again. Um, when you click on other thumbnails, they automatically get added to the player. And from there, you can save a player and um, straight through that. OK, you're, you're impressing me now. But um, what about how are you going to try and make money from this? I mean, what about ads? Sure, we're placing ads um, directly in the search results. So they're uh, easier to see, and um, they're not well. They're, sorry, they're, ob they're not obtrusive, but um, there's more opportunity to show them. And today we're releasing our highly customizable embeddable video players, um, such as um, ones you see on high-profile websites, such as TV Guide, Rue TV, uh, Ministry of Sound, and Universal Music. Okay, but we already provide this with YouTube. I mean, look. You've got a whole nine options that you can choose from. You've got, you, know, you can change the background, there's a, a playlist, and there's a lovely video bars here, and all this seems to work, and no one's complained so far. Sure. Now let me show you what we've done. These players were created directly in iDesktop TV, and they took um, a few clicks um, under 10 minutes. Now, as you can see, they reflect their brand. So let's take a depressing um, soap opera, popular in the UK, EastEnders. This is their YouTube channel. Let's create a player for it. So this player takes videos directly from the YouTube channel. So when the YouTube channel updates, the player updates. You can also, again, view the info, comments, related videos directly through this player. 
Um, you can also source videos um, through search results, um, favourites, playlists, um, YouTube users and YouTube channels. Okay, well, yeah, you, you're really impressing me now. Um, uh, is this even possible? Surely, is it not too complicated for you? No, I mean, you've seen other services such as um, Vimeo, Brightcove. Now, we're looking at the web publishing platform in a different way. So you provide the video hosting, one gigabyte uploads, now high quality videos. Uh, uh, and insight. Yep, YouTube stats. So we'd, we want to work with you as you've made everything <coughs> available today. Okay, okay. This, this all sounds lovely now, but I mean, I still don't really see you know, you're going to make any money from it. Well, think of all the hundreds and thousands of people that use uh, YouTube. Now, I don't think they're going to want to put their videos in a player that um, reflects the style and design of their website. Um, we can also include um, pre, mid, and post-roll adverts um, between videos so that um, not only do the um, users um, have their videos looking nice and a nice player, but they can also make money from it too. Yeah, um, no, no, you can't offer that. Why not? Well, we don't. Well, we do, and that's why we hope to truly capti captivate the huge and vast growing market of all online viewing. Please join our beta at beta.idesk.tv. Thank you. I love it. I think intelligent television is moving to the web. I like it too. YouTube's coattails are long. Enjoyed the ride. So iDesktop TV, useful tool for heavy users. And um, it made me think that I really like the usability of uh, Indish accent. <laughs> um, it's uh, a layer for a player, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And our next speaker is uh, Alex Young, who came from Sweden to start a startup in Berlin, and I will lend him my microphone. Thanks, Lukas. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Alex. Um, I'm lucky enough to be here today to represent one of the best startups in the world called SoundCloud. Um, I don't have much time, so I will get right into it. But before I do that, let's talk about extra weight for a second. Um, there's a few poor people in the world who have to carry this extra weight with them whenever they go online. Whatever they do, they have to carry this ball and chain with them. And that's, in my world, the artists and the record labels or anybody working with music and trying to use the net to its full potential when doing that. To make an example that you probably kind of can feel familiar with, think about Flickr. I guess you all have Flickr accounts. You probably use them quite a lot. But imagine a world where there is no Flickr. You're still trying to do the same stuff, but you're doing it via FTP. You're doing it via zip files. You're doing it via you send it. You're doing it via IM. Receiving photos from 20 of your friends on a daily basis kind of becomes a bit of a hassle then. You have to log into the FTP, download the zip file, open it up in your folder, get that into iPhoto, check out what people have been doing yesterday, and then you write them an email back about it. It kind of sucks. So, and I'm assuming that if the world was like that, you wouldn't be using photos in the same way that you are today. Um, there is a thing, though. That's exactly what the world is like for people working with music and with audio. So, with our little cloud on the web, we're trying to change that. We want to let the people doing music and audio go from this old-ass desktop world where things are being sent from one point to another whenever you need to do something, into something that looks a little bit more like this. Which is a very simple idea, but the fact is that it's still really, really missing in the music uh, space today. So, that's a little bit about the idea of what we do. But what does it look like? The stuff we've built, what does it feel like? Uh, we're lucky enough to have been featured twice on 37 Signals blog, so you know the UI is good. Um, the starting page is a little bit like this when you're logged in. It's a dashboard stream, nothing strange. The only thing nice and a bit different is that you get music, you get comments on your music, everything online where you can stream it quickly, go through things, you don't have to download anything, you know exactly who it came from. 
If you're receiving 50 demo tracks or promo tracks or master tracks per day, it's kind of handy. If you want to send somebody a track, you can do it very fast, very easily. Um, you can upload any audio file, any size. Um, so high def, whatever you want. Um, push it to email addresses, contacts, contacts groups, the usual stuff for getting things to other people. And when you receive a file, it looks a little bit nicer than just getting a zip file. Every track in the cloud has a player that looks something like this, a waveform for each piece of music. You can go and put time comments at specific time points within the track, start discussions about that Hyatt that just didn't sound quite right, which works really well in private settings for people working with music. We have some widgets. Actually, we'd say it's probably the best looking audio widgets on the web um, that you can customize. It takes about two seconds to make it fit into the color scheme of your web page. Um, you can do it for single tracks, releases, very flexible depending on what kind of metadata you have around your tracks. We also have another widget called the Dropbox, which maybe you've seen among, uh, around the web now. Um, a lot of bloggers and labels are using it, putting it on their web page, so anybody who comes there can send them a track right away. They get it online, don't have to download anything. Same as with uh, other tracks they're receiving. So, um, do we make any money off of this? Well, we have a freemium model, very basic. That's free to do certain stuff at three different other levels, depending on what your needs are. Maybe you're a big label, you kind of need a bit more than if you're just a prosumer. So, that works. And you may think, well, this is awfully niche, isn't it? Well, yeah, sure, but it's a pretty big niche. Like in the US alone, there's over 60 million people involved in the creation of music. They spend over $5 billion annually on music equipment. Um, and that's just for producing stuff. The trends of what people spend on computer software connected to music has skyrocketed uh, the last couple of years, meaning everybody has a studio at home. Now they're ready to start working more online with their stuff. And as a final note, we've, kind of, we've seen this stuff going around. I just wanted to stand on stage with, with this slide as well. Um, which, you know, may be true, but instead of just saying, oh, fuck, and putting our hands up, I think we should just keep doing the things we always do, is that we kick ass, the good times are going to come back when we do what we do best, and that's what we are trying to do. Thank you very much. I think you got something going. Um, serving the need of the artists and the creators is a great way to change an industry. Um, so I would say my tweet would be um, cloud computing um, blows into the music business, uh, gets drunk, sleeps with a groupie, and throws a TV out the window. <laughs> My tweet would be SoundCloud solves a clear niche problem, receives good feedback in the street, mon uh, monetizes already, or monetization already on agenda. Promising. It's, it's music to my ears. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Alex. Thank you to our esteemed judges. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to give a shout out to two of our runners up. Uh, they'll be down soon.